From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello there, and welcome to another Ropecast with me, Roger Charlton, and Peter Tisha. Hi there, everyone. Hi, Roger. You know, Peter, we were recently talking about what you need when you move house, the tools, and mm -hmm, so on. Mm -hmm. We we forgot something really important. Did we? Yeah. We forgot about the hammer and the nail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Well, actually, that was because I didn't use a hammer and a nail no. uh, <laughs> very often. I like to basically bolt things. <laughs> we are, yeah. are going to get a bit more technical this time. Yes, that's what we promised. Uh, but before we get technical, speaking of hammer, there's one very interesting thing I found about using tools, yeah. which is that there are a lot of verbs that are identical to the corresponding nouns. Uh, let me give you an example. There's the tool that's called a hammer. Yeah. What you do with it is to hammer. Right. And curiously enough, with tools, it works with a lot of things. Yeah. So uh, you have a saw. Yeah. We you know cut wood with, and what you do is to saw. Right. You have an axe. That's a huge thing that you cut well, logs with. That you axe it. You have a clamp to hold things in place. You clamp things. You have a wrench to fasten bolts with. You even wrench things, although that's used in a different way sometimes. Yeah. You have tape. Yeah. And you tape things with it. So And the drill to drill things with it. So there's a lot of so-called yeah. zero derivations where the verb and the noun are of the exact same form. But it's tricky, too. Um, uh -huh. Let me just pick up one of your examples. Uh -huh. An axe mm -hmm. and two axe. Mm -hmm. Now, two axe will almost certainly be metaphorical. Yes, yes. So, I, I, got a I think the job can be axed, right? Right. Right. So, when you lose your job, yes. Mm. Uh, the other ones, however, no. You can clamp something. Yeah. So, sometimes they're tricky. Uh, we'll, we'll put that on our website. By the way, yeah. folks, uh, www.com ropecast.de, you'll find images of the tools that we're going to mention and a lot of stuff, links and everything, because this may get a little bit technical and complicated here. Hmm. So why don't you just put, turn on your computer right away and then uh, watch the website as well. Well, Peter, you're the one who's moved house recently yeah. <laughs> with me. It's, uh, what is it, 16 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a bit more about the, the, the tools you find you, you need when you you're doing these basic jobs. Um, well, of course, since I, I told you I like to use bolts and nuts a mm. lot, what I often used, for example, to assemble a swing for my kids yeah. uh, was what's called a ratchet. Uh, that's a sort yeah. of a wrench type of thing, but you don't have to sort of get a new grip every time mm. on the bolt. And there's something you turn, it goes ratch, ratch, ratch. <laughs> I think that's where the... I don't know. Maybe it's where it comes from. Interestingly enough... The German term yeah. is Ratsche. And I ah, keep wondering yes. yeah. whether that came straight out of English. I don't know. Of course, on the other hand, it's the German you know, sound. Ratsch. Yes. It's what it does. All the time. So that's what I use as a kind of a special tool. And there's, there's another bit of metaphorical language to ratchet up. You can ratchet up the pressure on someone, on a regime, for example. All ah, right. And you can clamp down on, on yeah. uh, I think, illegal something, yes. right? Uh, so also put pressure with a clamp. Of course, this is these things that hold objects in place. That's right. And you tighten also things that you glued together with it. Yes. So that's where you use a clamp. I use those. Yeah, there's a lot of metaphorical use of that. And also one thing that I found out, I, I think it's kind of interesting. You know, I'm German where you have kind of difficulties in translating stuff. Mm -hmm. For example, um, you have nuts and bolts, as we said last time. Yes. So the nuts are the things that have little threads or you yes. know, linings in them. Well, bo both have to have a thread. Yes, right. And interestingly enough, um, we have nüsse, which would be, first of all, a sort of a literal translation of nut. Yeah. But we put them on the other hand of the end of the bolt. On the head of the bolt? On the head. Uh -huh. These are things that you put on your wrench. I see. And yeah. you know how the bolt has a sort of a... I think that would be a box spanner for me. 
Or would it be? Yeah. Yeah, but in German we call it Nuss. <laughs> so that's interesting, isn't that it? It can so, be confusing. Yeah, actually, you know, when we talked about doing this podcast, of course, I prepared a little and said, well, this gets extremely confusing because, you know, you have terms going all over the place. And then even with the British and the Americans, they use, yeah, very different expressions uh, on things and get get very specific. Well, you know what really amused me when I first came to Germany and learned a little mm -hmm. bit more about the language and mm -hmm. the culture, mm -hmm. I found you use the word Amerikaner for something you eat, mm -hmm. and you use the word Englander for one of these tools that we've been talking that's, about. That's one of those <laughs> adjustable wrenches, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Speaking of that, I, th I think the British use it. I, I saw that in a wrench thing. Wait, there's even We have a Franzose, which is a wrench that has sort of a two-sided clamp. Oh, I don't know what we call that. <laughs> it's a French key. Oh, right. You may not know that, but if you go to a hardware store in in in, in US, you'd, you'd ask for a French key. So actually, it appears to be a French invention. And which, by the way, we'd probably go to a DIY store in Britain. Do it yourself. Uh, that's definitely a hardware. It's mm. definitely a hardware store mm -hmm. in, in the US, which is Baumarkt. Yes. Construction store, if you if you wish. And there's, there's a lot of things that get extremely complicated. For example, the little there are key keys or, or well, not really a wrench, uh, which you do not put around a screw, but on the inside of a screw, which uh, has yes, um, which an, has six corners. That's an Allen key. Ah, okay. I think Americans call that a hex. That's key. right. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess Alan. This is probably one of those. those it's names. an inventor, yeah. right? Just like, by the way, the pinch, the the pipe wrench or the adjustable wrench, used to be called a Stilson's. Really? In, in British English, mind you. Well, that's before my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not that old. <laughs> I know you're retiring sometime <laughs> soon, but <laughs> yeah. But this is, you know, uh, sometimes you have um, proper names. Yes. Attached. Well, I think roll plug that we mentioned last time also comes from a person's name. I think the inventor is roll something yeah. of that. Yeah. And, and we used to, the plastic ones, I think for a time you you insisted on saying Fisher do because Mr. Fisher invented those right. plastic roll plugs. Yes. So this is where, where they came in. So a lot of interesting terms here. I think we cannot... <laughs> possibly name them all. Well, we, we put, put it on the website. Right. Like I said, there's one thing, though, and last thing I would like to, to mention, which I used a lot of times, and a lot of people will need that when they provisionally want to fix something, which is duct tape. Oh, yes. That is one of the most important household things, <laughs> uh, duct tape. Or, now that's interesting also, there's another version of that, which is called gaffer tape. Yes. But that's is that's something from the movies. Did you know that? That's right. Yes. Uh, because it's supposed to fix something on the floor mm. of a movie set. Yeah. Well, uh, you you actually get the word gaffer in the credits at the end of a film. And that's the boss of lightning. Right. And he had to fix the cables, and that's where the term gaffer tape originally came from. Right. That's, that's a, I love these things. <laughs> I hope our listeners love it too. I know this uh, is a very, very specific podcast, but again, if you sort of had a trouble following us on the radio, go to our website, www.ropecast.de, and of course, uh, just download our next podcast, which will be coming in, I don't know, two weeks' time. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.